Well, we're in one of our Eagle Seed food plots that's been hit by the one-two punch of groundhogs and deer. If you look at the utilization cage here, we have almost two foot of growth at least. And if you look outside the utilization cage, it's been hammered by the groundhog. If you were to come in and look at this without this utilization cage, I would have no idea what these soybeans were supposed to be producing right now. Kind of looked at the food plot, could tell that it had some unusual brows, was able to pinpoint where the groundhog's den was, and you could tell that most of this browse is actually from a little bitty groundhog. The deer are in here consistently, but they aren't going to heavily pressure just one little area of this food plot. They're going to browse sporadically throughout the food plot where a groundhog is going to concentrate near his den area. Well, I'm in to save this food plot. I've come in, I've sprayed the weeds, eliminate that competition. I put a little bit of fertilizer down. Now I've got the plot saver barrier system I want to put up around this food plot. It's going to keep the deer out and allow these soybeans to grow up two to three feet. Now I'm going to let the deer back in here where it's going to be able to stand the browse pressure from the deer. Hopefully at the same time, it'll keep the groundhog out, but I'm going to be sitting in the blind trying to take him out as well. Now this plot saver barrier system works against the deer's senses. It's got a repellent that's in the ribbon that we've soaked in beforehand. Now they suggest that you spray it, but if you have the opportunity, I go ahead and I soak it before I put it out just pre-treating it. Uh, but basically, it just keeps the deer out of the area. Now if you were to spray this on the foliage, it would keep the deer from eating it, but that's not what we want to teach them. We simply want to keep them out of this area until it's allowed to grow up a little bit more where it can keep up with the pressure that the deer are going to put on it. So what they suggest when you're putting up the ribbon for white-tailed deer is put it about 30 inches up on your post. Now I could have gone and purchased a green tee post, but instead I went and purchased this white post here. It was about half the cost. It's actually got slits for the ribbon to already go in. An importance of using a visual aid as well as a sense of smell for the deer. Anything white's really visual for them. So I went ahead and made sure for the plot barrier system that I got the white ribbon and I've got the white post. So it's going to be a visual aid as well as working with your sense of smell. Now you can see the post in the back. You want your posts to be about 30 feet apart throughout your entire food plot with the starter kit that I got. You can get about 850 feet of that ribbon that will do about an acre of a food plot. We've got our plot saver system set up, ready to go. We went ahead and pre-treated the ribbon that's around it. I'm not gonna have to come back in for another 30 days. At that time, our soybeans might be tall enough that we're taking down the barrier system, allowing the deer to get in to browse. We'll just have to take a look at that. For about every 30 days, you wanna retreat it if you're gonna leave it up for longer than that. We'll see how this works. 